Good day, everyone, and welcome to the exciting export session. I hope you all are doing well. Good evening, good afternoon, or good morning to everyone who are joining us from all around the world. Good, good day, everyone, and welcome to the... So I hope everyone is doing good. Good afternoon, Samuel. Good evening, Sejal. I hope everyone is doing well. We will be starting our export session in just a moment. We are waiting for more joinees to join us live on the YouTube. So I hope everyone is excite as excited as me and all of the panelists are here who have joined us today and to learn more about the importance of robotics for classroom and the hands-on session as well. Good afternoon. afternoon. Good evening, Nandu. So we are just yes, going to wait for... Yeah, yes, Mr. Bhopendra Kumar, sir. Welcome. You are audible. So we will be starting in just a minute. I am very excited for today's panel discussion because we are going to have a very insight we are going to have a very insightful session because we will be hearing from you know a lot of experts who have joined us today plus experts little experts who have joined us in the chat box over the youtube and our panelists uh, they will be sharing their insights and their knowledge on the importance mm -hmm. of robotics for classroom i'm happy to see you too all All right, so I guess um, it's a good time to start with our session. Once again, a warm welcome to all of you to the export session. And I am very excited to start this session on the importance of robotics for classroom and robotics mechanism with hands-on learning. So hi, everyone. You must be knowing what's, what's my name. So my name is Vivek Verma, and I will be your host today. And we all are very thrilled to have you here in this enriching session that promises to deepen your understanding and skills in the world of robotics. So thank you and welcome once again to the export session. So today's webinar is packed with insights and practical experiences. So we will start with an expert guest introduction. We will uh, then moving on to the panel discussion with some really, uh, I would say, questions that are out there and that I think will help the schools, teachers, as well as students to understand the importance of a robotics in a classroom. Then I will be introducing you guys to robotics mechanism. Then we will be moving on to learning area and hands-on activity by our master trainer. Then I will be telling you what were the key takeaways of this export session and the ending note. So the session will be starting with an overview of importance of robotics in educational settings. And we will be delving into the mechanisms that make these uh, machines work. We will focus on hands-on learning as well as ensuring that you will leave this session not just with knowledge, but also practical skills that will help you win Codevo 5.0 International. Now, let me introduce our esteemed panel of experts. Each one of them brings a wealth of experience and knowledge in robotics, and we are fortunate to have them here to share their insight with us today. Starting with Mrs. Rania Abdel Fatah Obed, as STEM Director at MSC Smart Learning and a, a STEM Advocate and Educational Consultant from Saudi Arabia. 
Thank you so much, Mrs. Rania, for joining us here today and sharing your insights. Next, I would like to welcome Mr. Alan Taylor, an educational specialist at STEM STEAM Pika at Kazakhstan. Currently, he is in UK. Thank you so much, Mr. Alan, for joining us. Pleasure. Now, I would like to welcome Ms. Ala Alhabar, STEM educator from Orientations Training Center, Sudan. Thank you so much, Ms. Ala, for joining us. Last Thank you for this great opportunity. Thank you so much. Last but not the least, I would like to welcome Mr. Bhupendra Kumar Jangi, a motivational and innovator teacher, skill development faculty of artificial intelligence, in charge of robotics and ATL lab of OP Jindan Modern School, India. Thank you so much to all of our panelists who have joined us here. Today, we are focusing on the importance of robotics in classroom settings and the mechanism at the heart of these technologies. We will also explore the hands-on learning in, that enhances the understanding and the skills set in our students. Thank you so much for joining. So let's start up with our session today. Uh, I request all of the uh, panelists, exposed panelists to have joined us today to please turn on their camera and be ready for the first question. So our first question for the panel discussion, the opening question uh, is to Mrs. Rania. So Mrs. Rania, can you please turn on your camera? Mrs. Rania, are you there? Yes, yes, I am here. So my question to you is, how does incorporating robotics into classroom learning enhances students' understanding of STEM, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics concepts? Uh, thank you very much for this interesting question. Uh, highlights an important issue uh, and an important practice that we are applying in our classrooms nowadays, which prepares the students for the skills of 21st century and, and uh, enhance their critical thinking in a way uh, uh, that prepare them to, to be uh, you know, leaders of the future. As a matter of fact, uh, incorporating robotics in the classroom learning, it, it, it doesn't only enhance the students' understanding uh, uh, of theory, it's also bridge the gap between theory and the practice. For example, uh, if, if, uh, if you attend a physics class at STEM school, uh, where students, they are not only learning uh, basics of physics, they are applying basis, the basics of physics uh, using programming uh, to apply principles of force and motion. Uh, uh, they use programming uh, to, to translate these laws of forces and motion into codes and, uh, 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 you know, make this robot uh, operating according to the rules of physics. Uh, this practice, which is hands-on activity practice, make them, uh, uh, makes these abstract uh, concepts of physics uh, more interesting and more practical for them. So uh, this is how we incorporate robotics in a classroom learning and how it affects uh, uh, to improve the students' understanding and the uh, application and the practice inside the classroom. As you know, STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And the big part of the STEM uh, education goes to engineering design process, which has to do with the robotics and coding learning. Uh, these students, when when they learn how to apply the science, <clears throat> excuse me, they they do inside the classroom by using coding programming uh, to the machine learning. They are uh, um, putting their learning into a practice that will benefit them for a higher level of thinking. Thank you so much, uh, 
Mrs. Rania, I really do align with your words that you have just um, enriched with us today. So uh, the same question goes to uh, Mr. Allen. So Mr. Allen, how do you think incorporating robotics into classroom learning enhances students' understanding of STEM concepts? I, I think the main way it can do it is intangible outcomes. Um, now we have the ability to very quickly replicate real world applications. Um, so students can look at systems in the real world and then in their own educational environment, they can actually start to build those from a very simple level and become increasingly competent at developing the skills needed, not just theoretically to program, but physically to build these devices and to experiment and to test. And that really helps their resilience because they can see, and even if they go wrong, they can repurpose, reprogram, and the collaboration with others gives it a very, very strong base in developing skills, real world skills that will be necessary in the future. And I think the other thing is that it's intrinsically motivating to actually be able to see something start from almost nothing and develop and replicate something that you see around you that you thought you didn't understand. And now it becomes more, more understandable. And then you can, interact with it better and actually develop your own skills to, to look at how you could develop other systems which do really useful things. So I, I think it's really great for the individuals and also for the teachers because they can see how much learning is going on within the classroom. Perfect, perfect. I actually really do, um, once again, I would say that what you have shared is actually true that we have to make sure and even I would say teachers have to come at the level of the students to help them to understand these concepts so that they actually use uh, those concepts in real life as well. Thank Absolutely, you so much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my next question uh, goes to Mr. Bupendra, sir. Uh, what specific skills do students develop when they engage in robotics projects and how these skills are relevant in today's job market? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Vivek, for giving me the answer to this question. So as what kind of skills we need while we are incorporating robotics into the field? So the major one are the problem solving, critical thinking, collaboration, programming, and you know, the practical application of the engineering principles. Just like mentioned by the Mr. Rania, uh, Mrs. Rania and Mr. Allen, that all the physics concept and all the a study concept we can implement through the robotics and it will be more insightful for the student to understand interactively and innovatively. So once they do learn that, it will be very easy for them to solve the real life application with the help of a STEM concept. So I would repeat again the problem solving, critical thinking, design thinking, collaboration and programming. These are the major skills that will be learned by the student during the robotics curriculum or the AI and VR integration with that. And nowadays, every problem can be solved by the technology. So it will also help them to gain their a mental ability to solve the problem with the help of logical skills. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bupendra. Uh, Miss Ala, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, your camera is still not working. Can you please check it up? Uh, I couldn't know what the problem. I'm trying to open it. Oh, it's already open, but uh, I'm not visible for you. I don't know why. No worries. So, uh, Miss Ala, can you answer how these skills, the STEM skills, the robotic skills, are relevant in today's job market? Yeah. Uh, actually, robotics project requires students uh, to identify and solve complex uh, problems and uh, fostering critical thinking, uh, analyze and analytical uh, reason reasoning. Uh, and this, uh, uh, this, uh, these skills are needed in the job market uh, uh, job market uh, skills. Uh, 
uh, also learning programming language and uh, coding skills uh, it's one of the skills what we needed in in nowadays uh, job market uh, uh, also, uh, collaboration and team working. Uh, robotics project is required to 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 working in team and communication with others. Uh, help uh, this helping students uh, to develop uh, strong uh, collaboration skills uh, and ability to work effectively in team uh, communication and co collaboration. Correct. Thank you so much, Ms. Ala. Actually, that is true that uh, combining the latest tech uh, and, you know, combining that with, uh, you know, the students who are learning uh, in this new era, these will actually help uh, in, you know, making up the new job market that is open to the new upcoming generation as AI is playing one of the most vital roles in the job market these days. So I think that is true that these uh, concepts like robotics and STEM education will actually help and update the job market as per the latest texts or the newest trends. Thank you so much. Uh, my next question is to Mr. Allen. Uh, Mr. Allen, the question goes, how does the hands-on nature of robotics increase student engagement and motivation in the learning process? Um, I think the hands-on nature now of actually being able to build things goes back to how it used to be. I think very much people recently have, have looked at a screen and played video games and they've interacted, but there's been no real interaction other than the screen. Now you can physically build devices and systems to overcome a task. So actually having a simple system which might start as on the screen I can move a sprite, let's say, that can develop into... Uh, autonomously controlling drones to do activities such as deliver medical aid in wet, in far off places. But the students have the ability to learn the practical skills to build these things themselves. And I think that allows the connection between the practical world and the theoretical world to become smaller and for them to be able to operate in both in a really fluid way. Um, which is only going to enhance their employability in later years because that's what co co companies want. Individuals who can see a practical problem, can think about it, and can actually not only design but help build the solutions for those. And that intrinsically motivates all of us to be able to go through the whole process and not just see a small part of it, but to be able to understand the whole process just gives us such a good feeling. And I think that really does motivate our, our young people today. Correct. I actually do really align with your words that you have just um, spoken for this particular question. That's true that, you know, when you are basically an all-rounder, you feel like, yes, you can do it. You can, uh, you know, even just think about or ideate and then you can build it yourself as well. So that actually really just not just motivates personally me, but actually others as well. When we are having that capability of ideating to building, to testing, and to launching that particular product in the market. So that's true. Uh, so my next question goes out to everyone. You can take turn by turn to answer this question. Now, the question is, can you provide examples on how robotics in classroom prepares students for real world challenges and technological advancement? So you can give examples of your classroom as well, or real life examples that you have seen in any classroom. Uh, we can start with Mr. Bhupendra. Uh, can you please repeat the question? Yeah. The question states, can you provide examples of how robotics in classroom prepares students for real world challenges and technological advancements? Uh, sorry, there was a network glitch here. Can you please uh, recite once? Uh, yeah, sure. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe we can ask... Meanwhile. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. We can ask Ms., uh, Mrs. Rania to answer the question. At the moment, Mr. Bhupendra is checking his internet connection. It's uh, my pleasure to answer this question because, uh, you know, as a STEM school leader and a STEM consultant and advocate, I love what I see inside the classrooms, especially in the fab labs and on the capstone areas where students really 
uh, they are enjoying their time with it. They are not learning only words and theories and uh, ideas. They are learning about the real world problems and they are learning how to find answers for those problems. So I remember this little kid in grade two and I always mentioned this story. We had a child in grade two and there were a task for them with the capstone teacher, the robotics teacher, and she wanted them to find a problem to answer. So she told them, what problem do you face every day that the robot can help us to, to uh, you know, uh, solve this problem? He said, I like nuts a lot and I face a problem in cracking the nuts, you know? So, so he, he, she asked him to draw a robot that is a nut cracker. And amazingly, they could, uh, in a group and in the team of the class, five of them, uh, draw a picture of um, a small robot that is a nutty cracker using their, you know, imagination. And they uh, uh, put the steps. So this is how we are training these students to think outside the box, uh, to use the coding, to use the robot as assistant uh, for them to assist them in their life because this is where the future is going so this time yeah. i am talking and my my colleagues the panelists they are talking next time you might have mrs rania avatar the robot who is talking and miss rania is sleeping in nap after work so <laughs> this <laughs> might happen in a real life and also i want to mention another story about using the robotics in solving problems how the Projects of the school are advancing and are, uh, um, you know, advancing, training the students in using the robots also to foster innovation. So uh, we, in upper grades, our students, they think about the sustainable uh, goals of the UN and uh, how to use, for example, the uh, green energy, how to use the solar uh, energy in order to... Um, uh, function as a main so uh, a main source of of solar of uh, sorry energy and uh, power uh, in order to uh, uh, for example make the uh, elevator move or make the machines move inside the factories so uh, this makes them think uh, of the robot to perform this specific function using solar panels and how the robot is going to use this source of energy in order to 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 function and make the movements all around. Uh, our students usually uh, think of this interactive approach. I think this is very important to 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 sponsor in the schools and inside the classrooms. And uh, the robotics encourages not only the innovation; it encourages also, all, uh, you know, the unlimited way of thinking that a student should should be guided through only by themselves and by their creativity, uh, not told what, what they have uh, to do inside the classrooms. They have to innovate, they have to create, to think outside the box, to, to follow the steps of, uh, think of the problem, uh, uh, think of the solution, design, uh, apply, test, and uh, do it again, uh, modify in order to have the final code and the final uh, uh, final shape of the robot or the project that you are looking uh, for and will solve a big problem in the world. And it might be, you know, uh, this unique invention, uh, it might be something big that is going to be applied in the job market in the future. So this is what I believe and what we are doing as STEM uh, educators. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Rani. I actually really love the concept that you are introducing the sustainable development goals uh, to the students and asking them to, you know, ideate on the basis of that and create some problem that really will help the world out there by automating or by, you know, making some projects that will help out uh, the people who are in need. So that, that is actually, uh, that is the main focus of Codever 5.0 International this year that we are focusing on the UN SDGs. So yeah, that, that actually really aligns at the best. So uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Ala, uh, would you like to give us or share us some examples of how exactly Robotex uh, is, you know, very challenging and real world 
and technological advancements that you know students are you know very excited about uh, yeah sure uh, uh, our students in the classroom uh, they would love to to do projects and to implement with uh, robotics tools and uh, sensors in different types sensors um, the 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 main design of the robot and the the uh, writing their codes uh, uh, they would love to to share their uh, their knowledge together and their ideas yeah yeah that's actually perfect because uh, you know once you promote that team you know spirit amongst the students they actually will find themselves more comfortable and confident around new people and that actually exactly. to share their ideas and you know once you collab all of the ideas together you get much better idea right so uh, mr bupendra same question goes to you and uh, i would repeat the question for you again the question oh, no, fine. i i got it thank yeah. you just to save the time so as most of the point i've mentioned is like we can create a lot many bots maybe the line follower or anything so that is the autonomous vehicle again creates a curiosity and the logical thinking in the student mind. Consider one of my students once uh, we I taught or usually we taught about the sensor and the actuators. So if you are familiar with the ultrasonic sensor, uh, let me give you the glimpse of it that it measures the distance. So we told the application, okay, we can measure the distance, we can create a parking assist system, etc. But one of the student came to me with a solution that the overhead water tank filling system, where we can use a contactless distance measurement. Means the water can also replicate and we can have the contactless measurement of the overhead water tank filling. So who thought that the creativity goes into the mind of a child can go vast from our thinking. Just like we can make thinking of the measuring of the distance, parking as a system, etc but he took it to the different level. Similarly, recently, one of our team, they acquired with a smart toilet example in that they have an automatic system. Once somebody will open the door, flush will automatically be done. So in that example also, we take the same ultrasonic sensor to have a contactless and completely separate out kit, which is uh, can be put down to any overhead tank so that it can measure whenever it is empty, it will automatically lock down the washroom so that nobody can enter and nobody can use it. So very smart idea and with the help of a different kind of sensor, totally different, which is measuring the distance, but we are measuring the level of the water. So that is a real life example where the student can go off. So that's all. Thank you so much, Mr. Bupin. Actually, uh, it is very interesting to see uh, students making such uh, you know, projects for uh, using ultrasonic sensors. That's actually great. Uh, the same question goes to uh, Mr. Allen. Uh, would you like me to repeat the question? No, no, that's fine. Um, I think the example I would give um, that I was always very, very amazed with was um, I had a group who were doing hydroponics, so growing plants in water, but they were working out systems to deliver the nutrients and to, to work around the system. And it started working after about six months. Um, one of the local contractors who did the uh, feeding in the, for the canteens saw this and started asking questions and it actually invited the students to go along and look at their systems and their growers and how the system could be implemented and could they improve their system because they'd not seen this before. So the students not only learn the practical, we have a small system ourselves, they then went out into the real world and they did make suggestions and they became involved in the design process and the whole idea of influencing what was happening. But having their ideas listened to was great. And some of them continued that and are still working in that area. Um, and that's lovely when those projects can be developed and they don't just end. They can continue and keep developing because as the technology develops, so do their skills and they can keep pushing those on, which is lovely. I would like to repeat that line that you just mentioned as the technology develops, so the skills. That is actually very true because a few years back, nobody knew what actually AI is, but it was there. 
but it was not out in the world. And now everywhere you go, you will see advancements of AI in every field. So that is true as a skills develop, so the technology is too. So thank you so much for every panelist for sharing the examples that you have seen. So the next question uh, to Mr. Allen once again goes, uh, that is, how does robotics encourage creativity and innovation among students? Um, I, I think how it can encourage it. Nowadays, if you buy Lego, which everybody knows, you buy a kit that is designed to be something, so there is an endpoint. Um, in robotics, you may have an endpoint, but you've no idea how to get there. So you have to develop ideas and you have to experiment. You have to fail. You have to then start again and, and all of those things. So the creativity is inherent in developing a system that is robust and efficient and does the task, but without having something to model from. So because you're not moving towards a model, which is a single point, you're actually moving away from a standpoint, the whole world is open. So the endless creativity can be adapted by the individuals. And I think that's where it really becomes um, something that the students love because they have control. Um, and that that's really important. I personally do agree with that. Uh, even uh, like in my case also, when I have the control over my ideation and, you know, my building process, I actually love that because mm -hmm. when you have that freedom, you feel like, and when you have that resources, you feel like, yes, you have, uh, you know, limitless, uh, you know, type of ideations that you can work on. So that is very true. And one of the things that you just mentioned, that is failure. And I think that is a must in the world of robotics because once you fail you will realize what you know the mistakes were and how you can actually make it much better so that's actually very true same question goes to um, uh, could i could i just one very quick one on failure which i think is really important for young people to realize failure simply means it hasn't worked this time exactly Doesn't mean it will never work and that's that's what they need to learn very quickly because right. then the creativity increases because they're not afraid to try new things even if they know they won't work perfect thank you so much for mentioning that same question goes to mrs rania i really like what um, uh, mr arthur said in the end failure doesn't means the end so this is what we teach students when, when they are dealing with robotics, when they're dealing with coding, and when they are vivid, when they are participating in Codaver 5, and when they are co participating in contests, these contests that, uh, competitions that, uh, you know, bring the best of them. So they, they think and they create and they innovate, then they test, as I said before, as the steps of EDB design process, then, uh, when they finalize their projects and submit it, uh, they should expect that this is going to be judged by, you know, a, a group of experts who are going to judge how this robot co uh, coding uh, uh, works and uh, what kind of sensors do they use in their uh, project and what is the objective of the project, what a problem does this project uh, answer? What is the scientific hypothesis uh, uh, they apply inside their project? And what are the, you know, the ethics of this uh, team rule and uh, the team uh, um, uh, uh, responsibilities they have uh, uh, them and themselves and how they created this. And it is the experience of doing this. So they will gain not only the success, it's the participation and the experience. It's one important part to gain the experience of participating in all the competitions and in all the activities related to uh, robotics and STEM education and uh, uh, the, advance, the advancement of the critical thinking uh, of these students is stimulated by participating in these, you know, uh, projects. So failure is not the end of the road. It's, it is, it means your model has to be advanced for next time. You have to work harder in your model. Um, robotics also, I want to add that it's, it's not only about, uh, nowadays, not only about the robot itself, it's also about using the AI. 
and the virtual re reality. So it's very important that students think outside the box and create projects that solve the problems using the AI, the artificial intelligence, which is a main core and important part of the contest and the competition of Codever. And uh, they should focus also on uh, bring exploring new methods of and the new solutions, maybe looking at to the outer space, maybe looking inside the environment, or uh, maybe looking and uh, creating new uh, ideas uh, that uh, that will add to our knowledge and to uh, their own knowledge as well. Thank you so much, Mrs. Rania. That actually is very true. And uh, I would say that, yes, uh, participating in competitions like Codeva 5.0 International will help the students to not just, you know, compete with, you know, students or, you know, young innovators from all around the world, but also gain the experience, gain the knowledge and increase that knowledge bank that they're already carrying inside them. So I hope everyone who is watching our session today has already registered for Codeva 5.0 International. If not, go right now on the official website on next tab to you uh, and then type in the details and register yourself. You can also check out the registration video for step-by-step -step guide on the same channel. Thank you so much. Uh, moving ahead to the next question, which uh, first goes to Ms. Ala. The question states, how do you see the role of robotics in the classroom evolving in the next decade? And what impact will it have on the future education? Okay, thank you for this uh, question. Um, I think the role of the robotics in education is expected. Uh, the, um, the, significant challenge, the significant challenge in the next uh, decade uh, integration of robotics into various subjects uh, will become more common, uh, promoting in interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary learning, uh, and this uh, and this uh, various of uh, various of uh, disciplinary uh, can um, can make students. Uh, how how these subjects are connected uh, together and how uh, uh, and related it to the real the real world uh, applications. Uh, also, collaboration between robotics and uh, AI and machine learning, as uh, Ms. Rania was mentioned, uh, will enhance robotics uh, capabilities and intelligence. Um, also, uh, robots will support uh, personalized learning experience, adapting tasks, and providing targeted uh, guidance. Got it. Actually, it's very true uh, that you have covered each and every aspect, I would say, uh, not just uh, the robotics, but AI and how exactly the education system will be changed uh, with these latest technologies. Thank you so much for yeah. that. Uh, the same question goes to Mr. Bupendra. Yeah, thank you. So as um, already shared with the Mrs. Raina ma'am also, that the integration of robotics along with the artificial intelligence and virtual reality will going to be a big change in the next decade. As well as we can see a lot many examples in the robotics field along with the AI integration or the machine learning just like Boston Dynamics have created a lot many humanoids and the dog robot and the animal inspired robots. And the same example is India, a great air show has been done uh, by the bottle of dynamics. So the robotics arise completely going to be changed. Everywhere in a layman daily life, the robotics and the drone technology for the videography is very common nowadays. So in the next decade, in, with the integration of AI, it will going to impact many of our lives and we can find out lot many scope in the real world to find the robotics application, just like in the healthcare, in the medical sector, and just like already discussed with the fellows that the 17 SDGs we have. So with the help of robotics, we can only solve these. Robotics doesn't mean we have only bought. If we are solving this like a smart toilet or a smart room, 
with the help of some sensor. That is also the part of robotics. So that we need to spread out among the students because as a teacher, I have understood that most of the students are liking, okay, is there a humanoid or is there a robot car or a robot dog? That is only robot. But simply if we're talking about a remote, that is also a robot. So uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. That's actually very true uh, that, you know, I think every device, smart device that we have right now can be considered as a robot. And I feel like, uh, yes, it's true that in the upcoming uh, decade, the education system is going to be changed at a very fast or vast pace because of the latest technologies that are coming up right now in the world. Right. So uh, moving to the last but not the least question of the day, that is how does robotics complement or challenge traditional teaching methods? And I would love if Mr. Allen can start, or Mr. Allen can start with this question. Thank you. Um, I think it's a very interesting question. I think robotics complements existing teaching because it includes everything that teaching up until now has included. But it, include, it includes it in an environment where it is much easier to apply and to develop and to see how each factor inter integrates with another. So it complements because it can take theory and make it practical and then turn it back into theory, which increases the learning. It makes it very useful to develop ideas. But the challenge is it's so new. Teachers in particular have a duty to understand it, but the young people almost have to now develop the skills to take on new things, which there aren't the answers for that there used to be. When we used to teach things, we knew the answers. Now we're asking students to develop things that, A, we're not sure what the answer is, and B, their ideas may be well beyond our technical comprehension as well. So the challenge is to make sure that as teachers, we can supply, supply the, provide the support and the scaffolding for the students to, to go, the resources for them to be able to develop, and the, the skill that they can take a small idea and make it larger, but they need to think about as it becomes larger, what are the increasing variety of issues that they need to deal with? So I think the challenge is allowing modern teaching to push the students to an area that teachers might be uncomfortable with because we can't, we need the support of others to make sure that that works. That's actually very, that was... yeah. Sorry, would you like to continue? No, I was just gonna say, it, it, it may have gone off the points, but the the robotics is a, is a compilation of everything within teaching in a small enclosed environment, but it allows expansion to the nth degree, which is fantastic for young people. And it, it's balancing those two issues, which is the thing. Correct. It's actually uh, very true that you mentioned that um, teachers also have to encourage students to, you know, start thinking not on just the basis of the latest tech, because imagination is beyond our control. We can imagine anything that we want to and, you know, we can bring it up to the real life as well. And it's true that uh, teachers also have to, you know, will I guess, yeah, a little uncomfortable uh, while, you know, implementing these uh, latest texts or, you know, you know, you, uh, reuniting the students again on these particular technologies, the latest technologies that they will be working on. So it's very true. But I would say it is also a very good learning experience for the teachers as well, because yes. I, I feel like my youngsters who like my cousins or my young cousins, they're also, you know, teaching me about these latest texts. So that is something that I feel like it is true rather than, yeah, we can be uncomfortable, but mm. we, rather than being uncomfortable, I would say start learning from them and that will be, you know, that will make more sense and will be much better. But actually yeah, very true yeah. and I really do align with your words. Uh, the same question goes to uh, Mrs. Rania. Uh, I think, that integrating robot, robots and the robotics and the coding, uh, you know, classes inside or the this curriculum, this subject inside the classroom and inside the, the teaching process uh, is, uh, it does not contradict with the traditional uh, way of teaching. Uh, the traditional way of teaching, it's just tells the students, this is the direct answer and this is the direct way. And uh, 
uh, they take it if you want to say easy going or a ready ready a uh, uh, ready thing to go uh, it's uh, one multiply one equals one and that's it but it for for the critical thinking process when we teach them coding when we teach them how to find the code for a certain problem uh, how to uh, program a robot in a way to to go through for example to follow a line or to go from one point to another or it's not about only programming robot for a mission it's studying the robot itself and how can it be beneficial in our life? We when we integrate this inside the science and the math and even in the language, okay? So uh, it, it will give the students wider space, as uh, uh, been mentioned before, wider space for thinking and for uh, possibilities. And uh, this will make them uh, getting better opportunities uh, to in, in, in the future because they have the skills of thinking of a problem solving, you know, and thinking of how to find, how to try once, twice, thrice in order to reach the correct answer or to 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 the end of the uh, uh, problem. And even this end, when they reach it, they can modify it. And this is the, the beautiful thing of a critical thinking away from the traditional teaching. So I, I think it's very important for every school to implement robotics class in their, this, in their system nowadays. If they want to prepare their students for the future, if they want to you know, give a complete task of teaching and uh, raise the standards of thinking and of a practice in their uh, classrooms and uh, in the activities, in whatever they are, they are doing, in, in the procedures, in the processes, they need to add coding they need to add robotics. It's not about, as uh, as we said in the beginning, it's not about a certain robot or a certain code. It's about learning how to solve problems, learning the language of the age, if you like. This is the language that these students talk now. They talk about uh, hackathons and idiothons and datathons and things that are new to the generation. So uh, administrations and teachers should educate themselves first and should sponsor the students, uh, should uh, uh, guide the students through this proce process, monitor them, advise them, but you have to give them the freedom to think and to create in order to be uh, leading them to the correct way. And uh, I advise all the schools also to include uh, critical thinking uh, lessons in their schedules, uh, which prepare students also for life skills. And these life skills are related to the robotics and related to the coding and related to the problem solving. Thus, we create citizens, global citizens, who are problem solvers. Think of the environment, think of human rights, think of everything we need in life. That's actually very true. I really do align with your words, uh, Mrs. Rania. And I would say, just to summarize, educate to educate. That is something that I would say, because once you learn about these latest technologies, that is when you will be you know, confident enough to pass on that knowledge, to sharpen the knowledge of the youngsters. So that's true. Uh, Mr. Bupender, would you like to add uh, your points in this question? I would like to summarize, because most of the points have been already covered by the fellow speakers. Just like the robotics adds a dynamic element to the learning process, certainly true in each and every respect. But as it is also encouraging the educators to adopt the more interactive and the student center teaching methodologies, because being the timing is changing, the students having gadgets in their hands. So they have a lot much more, as mentioned by the Vivek, that we can learn out of from them. So we need to change the methodology so that we can engage more students into the classroom as well as the practical teaching can be done along with the theoretical teaching. So that will be the essence of including robotics into the curriculum. So ultimate goal is to engage students to learn the concept through the STEM and the robotics and the latest technology, whatever it will come with, whether AI or VR or any new technology, which is not mentioned right now. So that it will be learned quickly by them 
So before that, we need to make us ready so that we can adopt the technology and deliver interactively. Thank That's you. That's very true that we need to prepare ourselves first uh, to adapt the latest technologies and then later on pass it to one our students. Actually, very drill. Very well said, Mr. Bupender. Uh, same question goes to Mrs. Ala. Uh, would you like to uh, add on your points? Uh, yes, um, robotics complements traditional uh, teaching method uh, by providing hands-on, uh, promoting active engagement, uh, in uh, integrating uh, disciplinary subjects, and uh, also it's a change uh, uh, traditional uh, teaching to 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 make the the students. Uh, who are the researcher and who are the, the educator and who are the the, the students also as well. Uh, yeah, by by and and the, the role of the the teacher here is just to to mentor the student and and let him and let the, the student uh, the chance to search and uh, go in the in the right path. Correct. Actually, very well said that um, we have to, you know, embrace ourselves so that we can let students understand what exactly, uh, you know, are the pros and cons of these latest technologies so that they are also using it ethically. That's very well said. Uh, so thank you so much to all of our panelists who have joined us today. Uh, Mr. Bupendra, Mr. Allen, Mrs. Rania, Ms. Ala, and enriching us um, on the importance of robotics in classroom. Thank you so much. So uh, starting with the robotics mechanism with hand-on learning, with hands-on learning, I would say I would like you to imagine a world where learning is not just confined to textbooks, but it extends into the realm of hands-on exploration. And with that today, I am excited to talk about the transformative power of robotics mechanism through hands-on learning for kids. So in the world of uh, the world of you know technology, the world that has been driven by technology, you know it is a very crucial thing that our knowledge is going knowledge that is that has been transferred to the kids is beyond the theoretical part. It is just not just in the theoretical part, but also focuses on the practical implementation of that theoretical part as well. And I would say robotics with it irrigates a mechanism, irrigate mechanism. Uh, becomes an exciting avenue for the young minds when paired with hands-on learning. And that is what we are going to do in the track two of AI Robocity Challenge or Forever 5.0 International. The impact of robotics with hands-on learning goes beyond the class, the goes beyond the classroom. It instills in our kids the confidence to tackle challenges, the resilience to overcome failures, and the joy of discovery. It sparks an early interest in STEM fields, creating a pipeline for future engineers, scientists, and innovators. In conclusion, let us come together to embrace this vision of robots, robotics mechanism as a beacon of educational transformation. Let's empower our kids not only to understand technology, but to become the architects of the future. Together through hands-on learning, we are not just teaching robotics, we are nurturing a generation that will redefine what's possible. Once again, I would like to thank you to all of the panelists who have joined us today for this webinar and made it a huge success. Now moving towards one of the most exciting part that you all have been waiting for quite a while, that is the importance of robotics mechanism with hands-on learning. So now let me introduce and welcome Mr. Dhruv Rudani, our master trainer and product designer. Over to you, Dhruv. Thank you, Vivek, for the warm welcome and genuinely looking forward to the hands-on experience. The panel discussion was incredibly insightful too. Good afternoon to everyone present here today. I am Dhruv from Codeva team. Today in this session, we will dis we will share ideas on how to build robots using different mechanisms to make them more interactive and useful.
by the time dhruv is setting up um his ppt i would like to i would i request all of the participants who have joined us on the youtube live to take screenshot of the favorite moment that we are going to that you you know you see in the hands on session that dhruv is about to start you can take a screenshot and post it on your social media platform tagging kodeva dhruv as well as me thank you so much thank you vivek so now let's talk about kodeva this time in kodeva we have two tracks first track is innovation and entrepreneurship track where you will be showcasing your unique and interactive ideas and the second track is ai robot city challenge a physical competition where you need to complete 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 several complete several task on an area using your robot within a certain time duration both the task present the oppor oppor both the tracks presents the opportunity to create exciting robot that can perform various tasks like lifting goods dispensing products collecting waste locking doors segregating items and much more these types of functions can be performed by creating a si system that is efficient and capable of performing various tasks using programming and mechanisms so first questions come come in our mind is what is robot so i request everybody who are live here to please share your ideas in comments what is robotics for you i will wait for an 30 seconds i would like to hear your answers okay so robots are programmable machines and machines are made up of several mechanisms which functions in simultane in sequence uh, which is programmed or maybe preset by humans so machine itself is a system that performs actions so where a vacuum cleaner is a machine a romba is a special kind of machine or a robot it cleans the floors on its own basically machines are that which needs human interaction to function but a robot has certain ability or certain level of intelligence to function by its own robots are made up of three major things first thing is sensor second is programmable controllers and third thing is actuators actuators are the part that perform the output of the robot here we see, here we can see actuator as an example of a servo depending on the input from the programmable controller it it can rotate itself by the specific angle the fully the fully use an actuator we attach mechanical parts to the motor or servo kind uh, actuators with this servo motor for example we can attach mechanical parts like a hook or or the sev several motor servo motor and use it as the lift or lift stuffs or do certain actions like grabbing objects or maybe uh, making a pulley or for matlab well, certain types of exam uh, mechanisms in today's session we will talk more about how to build with the mechanical parts using these three major robotics um, factors like uh, as we discussed here so you can build your robot or project using material available to you for example wood 
फोम मेटल प्लास्टिक पेपर और कार्डबोर्ड थ्री डी प्रिंटेड पार्ट्स रेडीमेड कंस्ट्रक्शन पार्ट्स एनीथिंग एल्स यू यू हैव अराउंड यू बट जस्ट कीप मेक श्योर दैट यू डोंट यूज एनीथिंग दैट इज हार्मफुल टू यू टू यूज यू एंड एज वेल एज अदर्स A robot can be made of several building blocks. Here are the three major blocks. First is frame or chassis. Second is actuators. Third one is mechanisms and end effector. So first one is, uh, let's discuss about a frame. Frame or chassis are integral to the structure, which are made up of anything like uh, construction parts. printed circuit board everyday object or you can make your custom frames so now let's talk about actuators actuators are the basically output devices which you are going to fit in your robot which will be functioning some out uh, which will give you output using your control board actuator are device that can be that can convert electrical hydraulic or pneumatic energy into a mechanical energy so here is the example electric motors which can give you a rotational uh, mechanical output uh, by feeding it a electrical input by using a control board the second one is a hydraulic and pneumatic actuators which will function using a, a compressed air maybe or maybe you can use it uh, you can make it functional using a water like you are making a crane or something which is functioning using a uh, two injections which are end to end connected with a pipe and it is like creating a pressure to each other and making things work and the last thing is magnetic actuator which is also electrical actuator but it function in linear motion majorly so you can see here in gif that uh, in this image that while giving electricity it goes in linear motion in and out so now let's talk about mechanisms and end effectors so mechanisms are the main functional thing which you will need to create any type of robot basic to have a knowledge of basic mechanism is more important and much is necessary before making any type of robot functional in a smooth way and the second thing is end effector end effector are like a wheels of wheels of the robot or any functional things which are going to grab your object or going to perform a task so end effectors are going to be a part of your robot which will help your robot to perform certain task uh, and complete uh, to perform certain task using uh, its parts like wheels or uh, gripper or something like that so now let's dive into mechanisms in more detail so here are the few examples of mechanisms and with actuators on it so first is the gripper mechanism uh, with a servo motor where servo motor is a actuator and the gripper Uh, blue part of the plastic gripper is a actual uh, it's a it's a mechanism which will function and create that uh, motion to grab the object the second of example is a lifter and uh, this lifter robot will be the um, same kind of robot which has uh, actuators as well as some mechanical parts 
which will function together to lift objects vertically and also last option is you can create your custom mechanism which can maybe surround objects and drag it with robot with your robot or make them or you can make your custom uh, mechanism which can have a pulley and magnet so the object can stick to the magnet and it can lift or your robot uh, lift object and move along uh, with your robot so this kind of things are this kind of uh, mechanical things you can do and you can create any type of mechanism and robot which can perform and solve problems by its own so mechanisms now we will talk about mechanisms so joints are the fundamental to the design and functionality of mechanical system enabling movement functionality and the transmit transmission of force in this desired directions different type of joints offer varying varying design degrees of freedom and motion allowing engineers to design mechanisms with specific fun functionalities here are the example of rigid joints these are the basic joint you need you are going to have it on your robots rigid joints are basic joints also known as a fixed joints which are not going to which is fixed uh, with each other and not going to move in any direction and going to fix your uh, your compo component very uh, rigidly so you can uh, use this joint by using your uh, nuts and bolts and two parts or you can use a uh, tapes to glue two parts or you can also use a uh, super glues or glues to create this kind of joints which is known as a rigid joint basically you need something which is rigid enough and not going to move whenever the robot is to create a complete body and whenever the robot performs uh, actions it should not move this kind of joints are known as rigid joint so at multiple places you need to have these joints so now let's jump into a revolute joint this is also a second major using a major uh, jo type of joint which you are going to use in your uh, robotics build so in this revolute joint you are going to have a nut and bolt or maybe some bearing or something some shaft between two objects or two parts which is going to function as a joint which will perform a specific rotational uh, movement around your axis so here you can also limit your axis but uh, it is only going to perform in a specific axis for example x axis then it will rotate in a same axis but it you can limit it to certain degrees you can say you can limit your for example let's take a example of a door simple door of your home so it has a like degree of 90 degree opening and close and uh, it only functions in a single axis uh, so it is creating a joint which is revolutionary so same kind of joint you can use at your uh, build for here is the example of a robotic arm where there are three i have pointed there are multiple actually uh, revolutionary joint but you can see this whole revolutionary joint has a limit and it performs actions in a single axis the next mechanism is a slider mechanism this mechanism works in a single linear motion and this mechanism also has a single axis freedom of axis 
in other word it enables movement in a straight line back and forth without rotation this mechanism does not have a rotation this is the key point because if it has a rotation this comes under a next next uh, our joint which is pin slot joint so coming back to the slider mechanism slider mechanism is a basically slider mechanism in which uh, your parts are moving around two planes of your uh, parts which are not going to separate from each other but going to have a certain movement between limitations and in single axis so now let's talk about a cylindrical joint cylindrical joints are a joint in which uh, your parts have a shaft between them and uh, it will only allow your parts to have two type of motion which is revolution revolution and certain amount of uh, single axis of freedom so basically you are placing a for example let's take an example of a um, tiffin box you have a like uh, complete tiffin box in which there are three or four containers cylindrical tiffin box in which you have three containers so you are placing uh, three containers in that tiffin box so it will only function uh, so your inner tiffin box containers can rotate in circular way or, or in a linear motion which is which is in that case it's a no, it has a no limit because you can completely remove that tiffin box but in this case you can give it a certain limit so that it has a certain amount of functions which you want to create this kind of joints you can see at uh, hydraulic pumps where uh, you uh, the cylindrical uh, two there are two cylinders uh, outer cylinder and inner cylinder uh, so in that case in a cylinder can rotate in uh, rotate also but they are fixed gen they are generally fixed at a uh, another part so you you are not going to generally see it rotating in a circular way but if it is a uh, it is if you, if it is not attached with any other parts you can also rotate it in a circular way and it is also going to work in a single uh, single motion so next is our pin slot joint this pin slot joint is a basically a joint where mechanical uh, uh, there is a road in between pin there is a road which is known as pin which fits into a ex extracted extracted sol, slot in another component you can see over here this slot can be in any shape maybe a circular arc or in a straight way this will depend on your own created design so you are going to allow the pin to move along that axis so it will perform the uh, perform action in certain axis and certain motion so this is also uh, a joint which has a two freedom of uh, axis which is rotational as well as linear motion maybe it has a linear or a circular mo se second circular motion because in circular profile it will go circular or curvy so second motion can vary whether it can be a linear or a circular the next joint is a ball joint these joint are common joints and these joints are mainly made up of two things ball and a socket here you can see this is a ball and a socket so ball are basically placed inside a socket so it will have a certain freedom of axis until the edge of that uh, socket and it can also rotate in a circular way so this type of joint can use you can use it in your uh, robot where you need a joint like your hands 
your shoulders shoulder joint it will work like your shoulder joint if you need certain joints in your robot to have work like a shoulder let's say you are creating a humanoid and you need to have your humanoid's arm to work like a human so you need to place a ball joint at its shoulder so it allow, so it will allow your robot's arm to perform actions accordingly and also you are going to give some limitations so it can mimic a certain shoulder limitations last but not least mechanisms can also have a cable pulley or tenders so what are cable pulleys and tenders basically these are the flexible kind of uh, things which you are going to use it, use your use it in your robots to create and perform some uh, mechanical actions using these things P uh, pulleys you are familiar with i think you are, you all are familiar with pulleys so pulleys are going to uh, pulls uh, pulleys are going to help you to pull something or grab some heavy load uh, in certain direction and have and uh, and and perform some task like uh, it can it's not like you are going to only have a uh, load at another, another end in each pulley you can also add multiple pulleys to create a, a certain uh, mechanical components where uh, uh, two linear motions are happening or something like a crane is functioning with a complete pulley mechanism where its arm is also connected with a cable and it's also moving with using a cables and it is uh, connected with the motors or uh, the uh, engines to generate a force which we which we will call as we will tell as a actuator of the robot if we uh, think in the robotic way and the second thing is tenders tenders are something like uh, you might not have heard of they are like elastic uh, in elastic cords or cable that connect muscles to bones in biological organisms but in uh, uh, but in robot in mechanical terms they play a role in creating systems that can mimic certain aspect of a human or animal movement so it it's basically a certain type of flexible material you can uh, you can see over here that it's attached uh, along a finger of a, a robotic arm and it will perform actions and it will mimic a finger movement as this uh, flexible material is pulled in certain direction in and second example you can also see a uh, thread is pulled uh, along a thumb and finger so the whole rabbit is crumpling and uh, grabbing finger of the person who is interacting and uh, this is how tenders work like it is majorly uh, uh, like engineered to perform uh, actions which are like evolved or inspired from a biological uh, things like uh, muscles or uh, maybe ma majorly muscles only but uh, maybe such certain things like uh, uh, you can also see birds flapping so how their birds uh, birds uh, wings are going to fold in certain direction but at certain uh, time after uh, uh, after certain movement it is going to cow, go go cow and then it's going to be a straight so that kind of mechanism is going along that whole wing and it is going to create a cow after certain uh, in sequence which will which will be only mimicked using tenders
so let's talk about uh, end effectors using mechanisms and uh, uh, materials which you have we can have certain task complete uh, using uh, effect end effectors like you can construct any uh, mechanism and join this end effectors at the end of that mechanism so the robot your robot will perform certain task at the end so may we already talk about we already have seen uh, different type of grips uh, in earlier slide so over there we have seen uh, pick and place gripper and uh, another type of uh, uh, mechanisms which are also end effectors but main end effector which you all are going to use in your robot are wheels so there are certain type of wheels here are the examples you can use it use in your robots and first example is ordinary wheels which are which is ordinary wheel which will rotate in a sing circular motion and it will perform a single path kind of uh, motion of your robot the second wheel is a caster wheel which has a multiple axis and it is good example of a ball joint you can say this is a good example of ball ball joint and uh, it is going to have your robot in any direction it it has a multiple direction but it can not it it might not have a, a uh, motors or uh, mechanical component attached to it it needs certain other another type of wheel along with uh, uh, your uh, your caster wheels in your robot so next type of wheel is a mechanism mechanism wheel and omni wheels so mechanism wheels are basically wheels which are made out of ordinary wheels but it has a rollers in certain direction like first example has a uh, rollers in a 45 degree angle which will uh, which will also allow this wheel to go diagonally at a 45 degree so by attaching this kind of four wheels uh, on your robot and uh, making that wheel rotate in uh, different more uh, uh, in different uh, forward and backward motion your robot will perform even diagonal or sideways uh, motion so these wheels are also majorly used where uh, there is a less space and their payload cannot be uh, rotated or turned around in a tight space for example a warehouse so warehouse robot has a mainly mechanism or omni wheels which which can perform a sideways motion in and a straight regular ordinary wheel motion so that robot can place the objects or goods in a certain rack with in certain angle so it 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 is uh, it makes it easy to move around that warehouse and perform certain activities and the last wheel type of wheel is a tracks so these tracks are basically a chain around a wheel uh, ordinary wheel so this chain will help uh, your robot to have more grip because tracks have tracks surface area to the ground is larger than the ordinary wheels and it will grip it will have a very good grip with the ground uh, and help your robots to move around any type of terrain and with with very less efforts and create a certain task so tracks are very helpful if you are going to use your robot in a different terrain or a harsh weather condition like a snow or a mud or some uh, rocky surface or like that things so thanks for being such a good audience uh, additionally i would like to share with you 
quickly about the new speed line following extension in PictoBlox is added now. You can go and download PictoBlox latest version 6.2 and get this blocks in your PictoBlox library. And these blocks are going going to have two main uh, line following uh, paths. Uh, uh, blocks which are like using adaptive feedback you can use your line following using adaptive feedback with a PID which will help your robot to move fast and in a less uh, uh, less uh, errors so go and check out this uh, this our new extension and download picto blocks it's latest version 2.0 6.2 thank you over to you Vivek yeah thank you so much Dhruv uh, for the enriching session I hope uh, everyone have enjoyed this session the hands-on experience was actually very good and I feel like this would have given a lot of, uh, you know, information to all of the students who have joined us right now in the live session. So once again, thank you so much to all of the panelists who have joined, who joined us today and enriched us uh, with the importance of robotics in classroom. And thank you so much to our master trainer, Dhruv, for the hands-on session. So once again, thank you so much, everyone. Make sure you are registered for Codevo 5.0 International. If not, you can check out the registration video. Plus, the registration uh, is going to be on the official Codevo website. Make sure you, you have taken a screenshot or a couple of screenshots of this uh, session and post it up on your social media platform tagging me, Codevo, and the panelists who joined us today. Thank you so much for tuning in for this session. We will see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.